Alright, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be showing you how to use Moon Animator 2. So, I just usually load up my base plate at first. And you see this toolbox over here? First thing you gotta do is go into plugins. And then you just gotta search up Moon Animator 2. And it should pop up immediately. So click on it, and for you it should say install, but for me it says update because I already have it. And I did end up updating it and I had to restart my studio. So if this works out successfully, it should say installed here. So you go to your plugins and Moon Animator will be there along with a few other tools. So to get started, you click Moon Animator and click file. And then you do new animation. And for this one, I'm just going to name it tutorial. So we got a timeline here. And it's pretty simple to use. I'm just going to show you the basics. To insert a character, use the character inserter tool. You can actually put a player name into this search bar right here, and it'll actually load their model into the game. And you click insert, and there's my character from the game. You can also use presets, and you can also use blank template characters as well. So I'm just going to be using myself here real quick. To actually add him into the timeline, uh, what you got to do first is press this plus sign right here and click on your character and click OK. And now he's in the game, or in the animator. So he has a bunch of different parts, you gotta animate them differently. Press R to switch between moving and rotating. As you can see, doing this moves his arm with the arrows and then these rotate his arms or whatever body part you want to move around. And then, so a tip, you should click on the rig and add, press plus to add the keyframes to the very beginning and then move to another part of the timeline and press plus again. The reason you want to do this is because if you don't, uh, I'm just going to move his arm here and I'm going to press play. His arm just slowly floats to the position you set it to. If you want there to be a little pause before it starts, then I suggest you use this tip. Uh, either press the rig and press plus, and it'll set all of his body parts onto the keyframe right there. Or you can animate it first, I'm just going to move both of his arms upwards like this. And then you can go to the first part of the keyframes, highlight it and do shift C, it's not control C in the animator, moon animator, it's shift C to copy frames, then to paste it you do shift V. And as you can see, uh, there's a little pause before he moves his arms. And then instead of floating slowly, he quickly goes to that position. So to make your timeline bigger, uh, what you gotta do is press 8. And there's some settings in here, but the most important one is timeline size. I set it to like 100 and it gave me like an hour and 40 minutes worth of animation I could do. Way more than I actually needed, but hey, I just do that in case. Alright, so if you highlight a bunch of these keyframes, then press 7, this menu will pop up. These will actually make your character move in different ways. Uh, you gotta actually put it on the frames where your character is moving, not when they're standing still. So yeah, just press 7. And there's a bunch of different settings. As you can see here, he moves a little bit more smoothly. Uh, I'm gonna do another example, I'm gonna use Bounce. For this situation, bounce doesn't look very good, it looks really weird, but for different situations, pretty much every single effect can look pretty good if you use it correctly. So that can actually be a pretty useful tool. If you want to move your character around completely, and just drag their torso around and their whole body will move. So I'm going to delete all these frames and I'm going to do a, just a quick animation as an example. Alright, so I'm just gonna set the frames, and I'm gonna make him walk a little bit. I'm gonna move his legs, and his arms as well. And he's gonna move like that, and then I just move his torso, and his whole body moves. Uh, I actually skipped this part right here because I'm just showing it as an example. I made a walking animation. It looks pretty good. Um... 
So the next thing... If you want to delete a character, just click on the wrench next to their name and then press delete. And they will reset to their default position. So the next thing you're going to need to know is how to put different models into the animator. So I searched flash light right here instead of flashlight. So I want to put a flashlight into the animator. How do I do that? First you grab your model and then you can't just put it into the timeline like this. So you actually got to use a tool called the easy weld tool. Click on it and there's cleaner. Use this tab first. While you're in cleaner click on the object and it's a tool at first but once I press clean it turns into a model and it'll have this handle. So that handle is going to be important. What you want to do is click on one of your body parts for your character and then you're going to do control left click the handle. You have to do it in that order for it to work. Then you press join and the models will join and now the flashlight is actually part of his arm. So now you drag the flashlight into your character file and the flashlight should be in the timeline now. Put your character in the timeline. Then, as you can see here, it says handle, and that represents your flashlight. Whenever I move his arm, the flashlight also moves. So this can be useful, but what if you wanted the flashlight to move, not to move, while you moved his arm? So this is a little method I do, personally. I'm going to do a new flashlight. So I'm going to use the character inserter here, and I'm going to just use a blank template. R15 has a lot more body parts to it than R6 does, so that's why I'm using it. It can hold more objects at once. Alright, I'm pretty sure you can hold it as many as you want, but anyways, we're gonna do clean the flashlight. And we're gonna go to the body part, just left click. Uh, I'm just gonna put it on his head right here. Make sure you're in the parts tab. Then you control, left click the handle in that order and then you do join and now he's got a very bright face because his flashlight is going through his face but now you just drag and drop the flashlight into the character and now the flashlight is a part of him you just add him to the timeline and the handle should be on his head right there so now what do I do with this I just usually drag him under the map so you can't see him and now the flashlight won't move with the arm. Uh, this is actually very useful for when you're doing projectile or throwing based animations. And it makes it look a whole lot better and makes it easier. Now I've got a flashlight throwing animation here. It doesn't look that good because I'm just trying to do it quickly as an example. Um, and it looks pretty good, I guess. I don't know for a quick example. So let's whenever your animation finishes it finishes on the final frame you animated on so what if you forget to drag your timeline to the next part and you started animating this will happen so i drag it here and it just flies to the next position so make sure every time you want to animate drag the timeline to the next part so it doesn't just change positions completely Alright, the next part is animating faces. Personally, I like using Sub's face pack. The reason for this is because it actually comes with a dummy. And the dummy already has eyes and face, or sorry, eyes and mouth rigged to it. And my characters don't have that, so I always just put my clothing, my character's clothing and whatnot onto the dummy. And that makes it a lot easier to animate the eyes and the face because I don't know how to rig the eyes and the face to the character. So you can just use a dummy if you don't know how to do that like I don't. So on this next part here, what you got to do is go to your character's head. And you'll see a tab that says eyes and mouth. And you just click that open. And as you can see, it says face. Just rename it to like Saturn Blue Eyes or something, or character name eyes, so that you don't get confused. And also, Moon Animator doesn't allow duplicate names, so make sure you change the name. And I do Saturn Blue Mouth here. And then this next part, how to put it into the animator. You click the plus, then you click on the image, 
right here, the decal. Then you check the texture box, and you click OK. And that'll put it into the timeline. So to animate it, just set the frames at the very beginning or else it'll get messed up. And then drag it to wherever you want their face to change. And I'm just gonna change his mouth here. So click on the properties and then click plus and it will add a frame to his mouth. So now I'm just gonna try and change his mouth. I'm gonna use the select tool on the Roblox tab right here. Um, let's say I want to use this mouth over here. So what I do is I click on the decal that's in this drop down menu here on the Explorer. Click on the texture and as you can see it shows the link for the image. Press Ctrl C on it. Then you click on the mouth texture and press 7 on the timeline and that'll open up this menu. You go to the value tab and replace whatever is in there and his mouth changes. You can do this to the eyes too, it's the same process. And since this character comes rigged with mouth and eyes, you can actually move them around. Uh, I made it look very ugly here on purpose just to show you that you can move it. Don't actually do this, it looks very ugly and very creepy. So over here I've got the camera. So to add the camera, you click on the camera tab and do add camera and it should appear at the top. So just set the keyframes at the beginning by pressing plus on properties. And I'm going to do it again here so that it doesn't just float to position. And every time you move the camera and then press the plus, it will move the camera. To change the FOV, click on the FOV right here, press the 7 key, and you will have an option to change the FOV value. And as you can see here, it zooms out. It looks pretty good sometimes to zoom out your FOV. And I'm just showing here that it does move around every time you move the camera. And I usually do this at the end of my animations when I'm already done animating. So to actually record these animations is I go to my game capture and I turn off capture cursor. I'm keeping it on for now so you can see what I'm clicking. And then I set the game capture to base plate Roblox Studio. I'm using OBS to record this. And right here, it'll actually pop up. So from here, you can just hide your display capture to hide your monitor and it'll only show the game tab. And you can just start recording. So how do you start recording it? So to get rid of this moon animator tab, you gotta press Control H and it will actually hide the tab. And you can start recording. So drag the timeline all the way back and just press space and it'll actually start playing your animation. Usually what I use to edit is HitFilm Express and you're going to need an editor to add effects or sounds. And whenever I'm done, I just usually click export and then I'm done. And I will show you the final product right now of how my animation looked. What's up guys, it's Quandale Dingle here. So yeah, that's about it guys. I really hope this helped you out. If you need any help, just let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, make sure you like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next video.